introduce our visiting artist, Juan Jose Barboza Gubo. Juan is originally from Peru, where he earned a BFA in sculpture before moving to Boston, where he attended Massachusetts College of Art and Design, and he earned MFA degrees in both painting and sculpture. He currently lives in Providence, where he's an assistant professor of art at Rhode Island College. Uh, please help me to welcome Juan Barboza Gubo. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. I just want to be sure that I'm using this in the right way because it makes me nervous. <laughs> okay. Um, well, thank you very much, Penny, for uh, inviting me. And um, until now, it's been a great experience. And I, again, I really want to thank you because it's been amazing working with you here. Um, well, where to begin? I have here two bodies of work. Um, the first one that is in all this room uh, is called Cruor Praelium Servus, that um, the translation for English would be uh, the blood, the battle, the deer. And the room um, over there is called Pink Narcissus. So I think that I'm going to begin explaining um, kind of like what happened with my mind all the time. I tend to uh, like uh, storytelling. I think that I'm fascinated by that. I think my family or something happened with the connection with my grandmother or my mother or my aunt, uh, the female figures in my family. And, um, and I think everything relates to that. So all these characters, you know, again, in all this room, uh, talk about the story of this, um, this person that um, killed himself in a metaphorical way. So he reaches a certain point in his life in which he realizes, well, in this case, it's a, it's a, female, it's a male character, but uh, it could be male or female. It really doesn't matter. Um, realizing that this person is not what, in this case, he, used, he should be. And he looks at himself, and he decides to just kill himself. Um, and he begins um, that process of uh, transforming himself, trying to find uh, the essence of, of himself as, as, a, as a human being. Um, and in this process of transformation, um, he becomes a deer. So little by little, um, this animal um, gets involved in the process, and at the same time, uh, he becomes more and more an animal. Um, that's kind of like the story of what happened in all this um, body of work. Um, the materials that I use, um, all of them, <laughs> I, just get, I just get really frustrated and tired of using the same material all the time. And, um, and I get really bored, actually. So I use different materials. I have, usually in the studio, three or four sculptures. Well, right now I have like 11, actually. But then I have paintings at home. In the studios, in the college, I have other work. Um, like even when I am like teaching, I'm just letting the students work. I have something on my hand that I'm like doing. So I think that I'm like just producing all the time. I'm thinking all the time. I don't know if you have questions about this. If you have any question about like anything that I'm saying or you want to know something about it, just please let me know. Um, well, again, you know, like the materials are, well, in this case, I want to talk a little bit about like this body, this piece over here, because I think to me it's like a really important piece. So it's a self-portrait. Um, it's cast in aluminum. And uh, this is the moment in which the character is literally dying. So he's on top of a, he's on top of a tombstone. Um, that's a real tombstone from a cemetery in Boston. Um, that's, as you can tell, is the art. It's just the top of the tombstone. So I found, I found a piece in the house of one of my friends, and he told me, you know what, just keep it. I've been having it for years, so it's yours, so don't worry about it. And I, def I created the whole concept based on just that stone. But um, we have two different characters here. Again, the deer that I told you what it was before already is like the representation of the pure soul of the forest. And this deer is licking the body of 
uh, of the character, especially certain parts like like um, like the belly, that um, is like the, the connection with the center of your body. So there are some parts just in the body that are really shiny, like again the belly of the guy. The other parts are a little bit more muted, and the deer is is just as shiny as I could, and is having just the texture of the hair um, or the fur just in some parts of the head. And it's because in the moment of leaking, he, the deer is becoming more, um, um, more animal, more like real. And, and the guy is becoming more, more like the animal, he's becoming more shiny. So there are basically, there is a tension between these two, these two characters in which one of them is being purified and the other one is there to purify him. So he's able to die and at the same time, he's able to reborn again. So again, he, like, if this will be a real situation, the rest of the tombstone will be deeper on the space. Um, so if he will be on a real tombstone, he will be about this height. That means, in my mind again, that the deer is, is, an, eth is an ethereal character and he, like, he's flying. It's flying, basically. It's not, it's not like Earth level. Um, but yeah, that's basically what that piece talks about. Any questions? <laughs> um, these are the last drawings that I did um, from the same series. And um, I think the pieces over here, you know, talking to Penny two days ago when we were installing the show, these pieces were are actually a little bit heavier than what I thought. Like when I made uh, two years ago or three years ago all this body of work, um, the material and how light the pieces had to feel um, was kind of important. Two years later, again, I'm still, I'm still uh, catching up with, with um, designs and information that I wanted to do uh, two years before or three years before, and I'm still drawing different series at the same time, and so that's the reason why all of them are connected. Uh, but even though it's a similar language, like the way that I treated these pieces is definitely much, much, much heavier than, than the way that the other drawings, the drawings that are over there were treated. The series for these pieces, it was much, much bigger, um, but it's been in a few uh, places before, and I don't have control over 100% uh, control over like what pieces I'm keeping or what pieces I'm not. So, um, and right now the the idea of this um, really colorful um, ovals or shapes like ovals is is um, becoming really important on my work, and I think that happened after the installation, the performance installation that is in the other room. Um, should we move that way? So, one question before you yes. Go, you may, may not come back here. Yeah. Of the colors, of the shapes, whether they're colored or not colored, the one, third one in um, seems to have more objectivity, like a blade um, piercing a throat or something, yeah. you know, but the others seem more abstract. Is, is that intentional? Is that oh, yeah, it's like totally intentional. What happened is that. Um, again, there are pieces that I cannot um, fully control which ones I'm having access to, to uh, put them on the shows. So um, the process of this, of this character is, is clearly dying. So he needs to die. So having one of the pieces, at least in the room, at least on this wall, that, that I was showing, um, I was showing the process that is a painful process usually, not because your body is dying, because it's not a physical um, um, pain. It's, it's more internal. It's like realizing, like in my mind the cycles go, the cycles go circular, and in theory you, you move forward. You move forward and you go up. Um, but not all the time you move forward. So sometimes you move forward and you realize in your mind that you did a good um, move to improve yourself as a person. 
but suddenly you realize that you are 10 steps back, making the same mistakes that you, that you made a year or two years ago. So still cyclical and still realizing, you know, but every time, like all those processes are, are painful to me. It's, it's, it's not as easy as say, um, you, you need to behave this way and then you realize it and then, and then you are like, okay, I am behaving this way. It's not like that. It, 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 you have to get into the rhythm of realizing and realizing until, until your full body understands it. So you fully change. So these pieces are, are that. These pieces are that, um, that cycle, that oval. It's pretty abstract, actually. It's just color. It's just a shape with color. It's like pretty simple. There is nothing really complicated about the shape. Um, but the concept, I think, is a little bit complicated. It's not as simple as I put a shape, and the shape is cutting his throat. It's not as literal at, as the piece appears to be. Um, did I answer your? Yeah. Yeah. But the one, the log, the taller one has that, um, uh, I don't know, shape to the top of the canvas. The shape to the top. Oh, the shape of the paper. Yeah, yeah. Well, there are, in this case, I am already getting into, those pieces are just the rectangle, the regular, you know, like rectangles. Here, I'm getting already, or I start looking already at my older work in which, in which, um, my um, connection with Catholicism, uh, um, I, I, I grew up Catholic, that's what I wanted to say. And even though I'm not Catholic anymore, um, the references exist. And that comes out of the shapes of the, um, the saints that I have in the churches. So it's not, again, as clear as the, the, work, the older work I used to have. Uh, or as direct, but it has it has those like references of like just curving certain parts of the top, to to uh, reference that kind of body. Yeah. You mean like the medals that they made. No, there are these like master paintings with oh, okay. saints, see, see. like in the center. They're they're literally um, I don't know how to describe that shape. It's just like they're just long and they have a curve on the top, because they put them on the churches in certain parts, specific parts. So. I think they build them like that because they have like certain parts of the churches architecturally that they have to put them in. I'm not sure if they have a specific meaning. Yeah. Yes. Um, Franz Kleine, he's a French artist back in the 50s and yeah. 60s, I think. Uh, he developed a blue. Uh, it looks a lot like the blue in those two paintings. Is there any significance to your blue? Does that mean anything to you, or was it just random? No, it's just it's just a random uh, color. It's like it's like the blues that I use. It's like the blues that I'm using for the other room. They are. Um, they just need to be blue. Yeah, I'm thinking on the blue as 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 as, as what the blue means to me, and um, that scene happens in the morning. So that scene. The whole, the whole scene, the whole process of the character happens on literally 30 minutes in the morning. So uh, in which he uh, interacts with the forest. So that is the dawn. It's like, like first light in the morning. So um, the connection with nature in that case is really important. The connection with that light is really important. The connection of the wet, the wetness of the floor, how like everything looks humid, it's really important. The connection of the humidity of that body, that is the forest, with, with how would you feel if you feel that you are touching something humid, it's really important. So, so it, ha it had to be at a specific time in the morning. That is literally th 30 minutes, 30, 20 minutes, that in which the light still like this powerful blue, and obviously have to do have something to do with the older work that I did, like I don't know, like 20 years ago, that I had a blue series um, for no more than like two or three years. That I, I still think I went back again the cycles. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying this, but it has to do with that, I think too. Yeah. What is the blue? Is it watercolor or acrylic? 
everything here is, well, the, everything that you see that is red, this one has it on the back, but I, I fully erased it. It has it a little because the sketch of this was uh, blood. So everything that you see over there that is this color over here, like this one, this one, this one, everything on the bottom, all that, like that one over there uh, is blood. Everything over there was blood before, but I added um, uh, color, uh, watercolor pencils. Where did you get the blood? From my veins. <laughs> yeah, no, from my veins. With a doctor, obviously. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, no, I didn't cut myself, and I'm not wearing like long sleeve because I don't want you to see my scars or stuff like that. No, it's so not like that. So, what is the blue? Is that what? Is, what is that? Is that watercolor? That's wash. That's wash with watercolor pencil on top. I I layer a lot of materials to get certain kind of texture because if I when I add just one material, it just I don't know, to me, maybe for other artists it's fine, but to me it feels just flat. So, yeah. So which is the older work in, in this room? This one. That's the older work. Yeah. Because what's happening on the wall is not gentle like what you're seeing here. It's no. Brutal. Yeah, and that's what I was what's explaining. It's that? like the, the difference between is the same, is part of the same body of work, but Again, something happened the last like year when I was making these pieces, going back to my uh, my idea of of these characters, that it just it just changed. And I think it's because at that time I was working just with crystal, cast aluminum, silver, and really thin paper. And even though here there was still that same paper or similar paper, I started working already in a parallel way with the ceramic pieces and my. I am assuming it's like the action of my body dealing with heavier, more, um, yeah, like heavier sculptures um, make me create, made, made me create pieces that are visually much, much uh, more uh, dense. Um, because I don't have a real, I thought about it, but I don't have a real answer for that. I know is, I, I know I could draw these pieces exactly in the same way that I draw the other ones, much, much lighter. But my body was just reacting in a different way. It was it's something that I couldn't stop. Even though I was conscious about it, and the first piece that was this one, when I saw it, it was in process, I was like, wait a second, it's like, this is much heavier. But I think it's because, again, I was like, the, the ceramic pieces went in the kiln like a few times. The bus that I was doing, there are like 11 of those in my studio that are gonna be another different piece that are going to the kiln, each of them like six, seven times to the kiln to get exactly the blue that I want. So like all the process of glazing, working with the clay, I think it's just process, what is making me or forcing me to make these pieces um, a little bit just heavier and more dense, yeah. But the process what you did with the, like the sort of like a self-portrait on this wall back here, this yeah. Japanese paper. Yeah. Um, it, it almost looks like, you, how did you start that? Did you start that by printing yourself onto it, physically? The that, first one or the second one? Uh, just on this back wall right here. It sort of has a physicality to it, like you actually uh, laid onto the paper or something uh, to impression upon it before you actually Which one, the, the white one? Uh, yeah, like this one in particular, or the next one over. Oh, the second one. It sort of has this sort of a, almost like you're positioned on the paper yourself. No, I was just like, in this case, I was looking for certain kind of tension on the body. So um, there, is, there is a sculpture that is gonna be, kind of, that, is, that has the feeling of this piece, that is gonna be between like rawhide and glass. And the piece literally has these really long, it has, it has these long arms. So I needed, this, I needed this gesture. I needed the body to really like, kind of like move forward a little bit and start curving to the center. Um, and these are just like layering and layering and layering information because even though you see just one layer of paper here, over here there are like five layers of paper glued on top of each other. To get, to get those, those whites and to get the fibers in between, 
and, and to get, so if you see this in an angle, you are going to see that the hair, even the hair has um, a certain kind of sheen. So I, I work with a lot of um, uh, silver uh, materials and even different temperatures of silver. And the same thing that happens on this piece over here, this is more obvious than that one. This is, this is probably the more, one of the more subtle pieces that I made on the series. Um, but the same happened over here. It's like all the process that I did on this area, I did it, I did it over there. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, basically all these pieces are, uh, they talk about the same character. They talk about um, looking at yourself. They talk about like removing part of your body and, and literally just looking at it. You know, like that piece over there that is, the guy is literally just like holding his brain and just like, like analyzing it. So um, the materials are important. Um, I don't have pieces in regular glass here that they are in my studio in process, but everything that is here is, is a lead crystal. That it's a more pure material. If you put glass, regular glass, the, the clear one next to crystal, crystal is, is, is like ice. It's just white, pure, pure, cold white. Regular glass is more yellow, it's dirty. So uh, even, the, even the decisions of using crystal for certain pieces or, or glass for other ones in which, in which the character is, is, is not fuel, is not uh, fully pure, uh, it's important to me. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you guys want to move to the other room. I can explain a little bit what happens over there. So, um, this piece, this group, this body of work over here is, is called Pink Narcissus. And um, even though there is nothing pink here, um, there, uh, the connection again with the blue and with everything that I explained before, um, it's really important. It's the time of the, the, time of the day in which, in which the character is, is performing. So again, the character over here is much younger. It's not, I am assuming, again, like that, that comes with my uh, personal experience, but when I talk to my friends and I, I tend to like, um, I tend to analyze a lot what, what people do or what people say. And even though you think we are having a normal conversation and all the, I'm all the time questioning myself why certain people behave in certain ways or not. So, and that basically is what my work is about. I really, my mind gets into, my mind gets into this like little game that I think is just fascinating. So, um, and I just make stories out of it. You know, like analyzing and, and taking decisions based, based on certain patterns. So, um, I don't know why I mentioned that. I was gonna say something. I lost track of it, but whatever. So the thing is that, um, this body of work basically is, oh, I know, I remember. The, the person was, in this case, is younger. So the character outside, I am assuming, based on my friend's experiences or mine, that you have to be um, at a certain age or like old enough or have enough experience in life to make clear, uh, strong changes on yourself. So, um, and that's basically what happened, you know, the story outside. Over here, the character is much younger. The character over here is the first time in which, um, in which the character realizes his body. It's like, oh, I have a body. And he starts like, like understanding his skin and understanding his uh, sexuality and understanding certain kind of like feelings. And that's usually um, between like 16 to 22, 23, 24 years old. Um, and that's what this character is doing on the field. So he, he goes to the forest and he starts like touching himself against, against nature and understanding again his body. So the moment, this piece is called the clearing. And there is a moment in which um, the forest just opens. And that's the moment to me in which, well not to me, the, the way that I see it, in which light finally touches earth because in the other parts of the forest, the trees are covering everything. So in that moment, as you can see on those paintings, there are these kind of like lines that go 
in certain angles that to me are, are, are the moment in which the light is finally touching the leaves and just like reflecting other, other kind of like rays on the space. And you have the characters just moving around. There's one over there, one over there, one tiny one on the back, really blue, and all these trees around. So um, again, in my mind, this space has a coat of blue in it uh, that is like a glass, it's kind of like a reflection. And in the moment in which the character decides to get in there, this space just opens for the, for the character to really interact with the field. And uh, this piece, again, this is clay for the ones that didn't know. Um, we worked really hard on this <laughs> like two years ago to be able to finish it. Um, it was built for a museum first and it was a rectangle because it was fitting perfect a room with two doors. Uh, but the piece was made to be an oval, so there was, there was a certain cuts on the clay already uh, to be able to keep it as an oval later and show it on spaces like this one. Um, and it had to be an oval. In my mind, it was always an oval. But uh, what happened over here is that when we finished these pieces, um, I did a performance when the clay was still uh, soft. And thus, basically, my body marks are pushing the leaves in all these areas. So there are moments like here that you see my knees over there, my hands, and not even my hands because I was kind of like behaving in my way like, or doing with my body what an animal would do if it would be like, um, like filling his body with, with the clay. And it was kind of like an interesting experience uh, right now that I, that I remember that because there were parts of the clay that they were wet. It was kind of like a dealing with a relationship. Like sometimes you push, you keep pushing and push more and at some point you feel the pointy dry clay over there and you can tell that it's going to break. And when you know that it was going to break, you just push your body to the other direction. So um, I didn't have control. I, we couldn't 100% control the clay here. There were parts that were dry already. Uh, but um, I knew kind of like what I was going to do over here because I, I tested it before. And those drawings over there are basically part of it. It's part of, in an abstract way, what my body was, was going to, to do or how my body was going to turn um, on the space. So, and it's basically another skin. You know, it's the skin of another character. In this case, there is no deer here. Um, there are the leaves, there's like earth. But uh, this earth has, again, these flowers that you see in all those parts that are cast on crystal. All of them are blue, and uh, the flowers are, are growing in the opposite way. So what you see over here is the, is the, is, is the more um, internal part of the body, the one that is really touching me, because the flowers are growing backwards. The, the tiny, 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 you have to see it like really like horizontal. If you go down, you will see the tiny ones are the, are the highest ones. And when the flower really grows and is fully open, are hidden on the bottom. So by understanding how the flower is growing, you will know what's, in, what's interior and what's exterior um, as a body. So questions about that? And in a room in my college. So we installed this in one of the, one of the studios that was almost the, size of, almost the size of this room. And um, we just covered everything on white. There was just one photographer, one filmmaker. Um, the students were not there, obviously. I was naked. Um, we did it on a Sunday. We just closed doors. Nobody was able to be in the art department. And I just did it. So it's recorded. Like I was talking to one of the faculties uh, before, and, and one of them asked me, it's like, are you going to show this video? Are we going to see it? And I was like, I don't, I'm still not sure if the video will um, add to this piece or not, or will destroy it. I, that's something that I'm still not sure yet. One day, probably. Now, I'm not sure. Yeah. Is each section of that baked, then? The, 
uh, after you did the performance, did you then proceed to bake the clay to harden it? Or, uh... Oh yeah. So the, the, like the clay was soft and we did it, we knew um, the kind of curve that I wanted on the piece. So we started on the corner and we started on this corner and then we started going towards, towards the center. And we literally put all the tiles because there were, there was the, the clay was on top of these uh, wooden um, pieces of wood, so uh, we knew what it, what it, what it, um, the quantity of shrinkage that each piece was having based on how much they were drying. So that was kind of hard to control. It was really hard because you have, even though it was covered with plastic and everything was covered with plastic on top, the, the clay was was drying too fast. And we did it during the winter where the temperature of the rooms were just, we couldn't control it. Um, but the last part basically was the center. I did a performance. We just removed all the tiles. And the center pieces, you can tell if you are really focused on following the lines, you will see where, the, where we were forced to, uh, to cut. That, that the clay in half to be able to separate the ties because my body was literally gluing one piece of clay with the other one and there wasn't even though I wanted this perfect no like seamless piece and you can't is I, I, I don't have the I don't know I don't have the technique to do it maybe you can I didn't so I did the best I could yeah Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. My dad was a florist, so that's why yeah. the, the best one was like pretty convincing. But. Yeah, no, we basically got, there were like 15 molds. So I got a leaf that we had in the, in like in the college somewhere in the middle of the winter. I was just looking for these pots on <laughs> <laughs> that had like big leaves somewhere. I don't remember even where I, where I got them. So I took those, went to the studio, made molds out of it, out of plaster. And then I just started teaching the students how to do it. So I had like one, two, three, four students that were helping me doing this, plus three of my friends from, from the city that they, they really wanted to like do it. So, and then we started just building leaves from different sizes. And every time that you remove a leaf, all the edges are different. The curls were different. They were, they were forced to remove the leaf and do any kind of movement they wanted. So we had like million shelves with massive quantities of clay covered perfect with plastic. So it was me and, and two more students that were my best students in the college that they kind of think in the way that I think and they know exactly what I want. And we were just literally building, building the movement that we wanted and we knew that that we wanted certain kind of um, parts that were higher, parts that were lower, or, or moments in which the leaves are moving a little bit more in a horizontal way so you feel kind of like wind or something. So we didn't want anything that was fully uh, static and straight up. So yeah, we were playing a lot with that. It was tricky though because there, there, there were moments in which we were losing control. We had to build this. We had literally a month yeah, to build the first part. So, because the classes began, I literally finished, I took the last tile out of the room three hours before the first class at eight in the morning, the beginning of the semester. <laughs> I don't have a studio to do this at home, I had to do it at school. <laughs> yeah, so, but it was an interesting, uh, pro it was a really interesting process actually. And the students learned a lot. We were dealing not just with because they were taking decisions with me uh, for the heights. So there was all the time a conversation. It was not, the main idea was mine, but all the decisions and all the technical part, like those, like one, especially two of those students, right now they are doing amazing stuff. And, and they are really making things that, that, that are like big, not just because they are big, they, they are interesting too, so. Any other question? Could you talk a little bit about the piece behind you? 
Yes. Um, well, right now, I, um, I mentioned before that I was making these busts. So I have those pieces over there are basically um, the mirror of, of this, uh, this character over here. It's a self-portrait. Again, the, the idea of the blue, the idea of the mirror, the idea of, of, of how, how, you, how much you can change. And uh, all, all the subtleties, even though they are like similar shapes, they are different enough. Um, the number, uh, it's, it's important, there are 30 pieces, is basically a month. So, and there is this, this uh, bust facing this piece, but at the same time, is, you can see that there are parts of the bust that are different. The bust is not straight, it's like moving, it's, it's doing certain kind of like um, movement, and there are parts of the face that are changing already. It's not just a pretty bust. And, and the reaction of the bust is based on seeing these pieces, analyzing it, and then doing the gesture. It's, it's basically looking at yourself in the mirror. Like, I wish I'll have here a big piece of glass just floating uh, in between, but uh, installing stuff like that is a little bit tricky. So you have to just, I have to take decisions of putting my money in other pieces instead of a massive piece of glass in the front. But um, it's basically just like looking at yourself. It's every morning when you literally just look at yourself in the mirror and you don't see just some, uh, some like face, a simple face. It's like it's more than that. <laughs>